We've been hearing some interesting things through the Descent comms, including the development of three different AI systems through Ortiz Robotics, Natalia and Kelvin's involvement with this, and even talks around the first time that Gordon Amherst came onto the radar of the NSA. These next five comms will expand on this, and even talk about the origins of the Descent simulation program. There will be references to other videos that I've made on these comms, so if you haven't seen them yet, you can find them in the description. We can't test the system in the open, so we need to come up with a way to simulate battle conditions. And what kind of simulation? One that is as realistic as possible for our operators. You mean like a VR simulation? No. Augmented reality, but more realistic. Well, that should be easy enough with the contact lens. Yes, but I want them to feel the hits. If it's just the visual, we won't be able to assess the real stress and pressure on the body. They are talking about giving Isaac to gym teachers in Missoula. I want to know how they would react in a real combat situation. You want them to feel pain? Yes. People in pain will react in unpredictable and dangerous ways. I want to know what these ops will do when they are really in pain and afraid before I give them live rounds. In this piece, Claire pitches the idea around a simulation operator suit to Alexander it's clear that they're talking about descent and augmented reality simulation for training new agents. She even wants to go as far as allowing would-be agents to experience pain in the right situations. Claire seems very conscious on what she has created with Isaac, and of course the other two artificial intelligence models too. She appears to be doing her best to ensure that the right people are being given this power and authority. This would be her stress test, to see if individuals are capable of wielding it. Where in reality, as we would find out later, this really wasn't such a concern. The division recruitment team seemed to be leading almost anyone through in the end. No one really expected these agents to actually be activated, and this certainly clouded their judgement. Spend the minimal amount to get this prototype shipped. I'm working on a ballistic simulation to test the accuracy and effectiveness of the Warhounds. Simulation? Yes. Since we can't test these prototypes in the open, we have created an augmented reality simulation, complete with real-time data on the effects of your gear and tech on hostile elements. And who are these hostile elements? Operators who we trust, and have volunteered to be digital cannon fodder for your warhounds as a training exercise. The suits we have designed will track all their biometrics, and the data we gather from them will be invaluable. Did Cal put you up to this? Here, Natalia is pushing Claire to get the prototype shipped. In this case, they appear to be talking about the Black Tusk Warhounds, but Claire is stressing that they need to have a number of tests run before they should be taken out into the real world. She insists that the Warhounds should be run through a simulation she has developed to test the ballistics and collect data that will provide invaluable information around how they perform and what updates need to be made. However, the Warhounds need to be put up against something in order to be properly put to the test. Chosen operators will be geared up and thrown into the Warhounds training exercise. They will be wearing the suits that Claire has developed specifically for the simulation that are able to track all of their biometrics throughout the exercise. Natalia is suspicious, but seems to be letting it play out for now. We can't afford this. Put it on Sokolova's tab, she's got the money for it. You can't keep putting Cal's R&D on the Black Tusk budget. Why not? Well, this isn't for her tech. She doesn't want the AI. She doesn't want Isaac. She doesn't want untested tech either. Are you going to give the operators warhounds? Of course not. But I am going to let them know what it feels like to fight one. You're going to make the Black Tusk tech part of the field test? Yes. We will field test her tech and gear as the AI-generated hostile force and get real-time assessment of how the operator reacts. That testing is for Black Tusk and goes on their budget. This is where the last couple of comms start to tie together a little more. It turns out that the prototype for the operator suit is a little expensive, but Claire had always planned to put this completely onto Natalia's budget. Obviously, Alexander is concerned, and he has a right to be. I mean, it's Natalia. It isn't just the cost of the suit. It seems like the expense behind the whole descent simulation has been invoiced to Natalia. Claire has obviously been using the Warhounds as a reason for Natalia to fund the whole thing. 
On top of this, it gives Cal's agents a chance to gain some experience fighting against the Warhounds long before they have been put into action. The descent simulation appears to be made with testing and training division agents in mind, at least in Claire's eyes. And from the very start, Claire showed that she doesn't trust Natalia one bit and would prefer she wasn't working with her. But given she has no option, she chooses to use the opportunity to keep Cal's operatives ahead of the curve and at Natalia's expense. The only problem I see here? Natalia isn't stupid. I get the feeling she is onto this, and maybe this is why we haven't heard anything from Alexander and Claire in the more recent timeline. How is the testing going? Impressive and horrifying. Care to expand on that analysis? Well, I went to a play last night, and every member of the theater's phones are now on the database, giving continuous wiretaps and uploading their text and voicemail histories along with online searches and social media profiles. So, a success? If you think waiting through millions of hours of new data is a success, sure. It doesn't filter? Oh, it filters. But it's arbitrary, and it only tells you what it thinks is relevant. What's the problem? Well, there was a college student at the play last night. She has a crush on her professor was talking about how she was going to have a one-on-one -on -one with him today and was going to try and seduce him. Any red flags on the professor? Uh, just some egomaniacal adjunct at Cooper Union. What does he teach? Science. Virology. Has been doing lectures about climate change, human interference, and how if we aren't careful, viruses will evolve to solve the problems for us. Sounds like a kook. Is he dangerous? Everyone is dangerous. But this is just invasive. We aren't tracking him, we're tracking a student. Well, sometimes we need non-criminal informants. Let me know how the meeting goes. I don't want to listen to a young girl seduce her professor. If she succeeds, we can send an anonymous tip to the college administration. I didn't join the NSA to tattle on dirty old men to the admissions board. We save the lives in front of us. You can get a predator off the streets. It's not as glamorous as taking down an international cartel, but it's still the job. Do the job. In this one, it sounds as though the NSA analyst attempted to test out the new tech in public, and the results were terrifying. In a room full of people, the AI was able to tap into every single phone, providing a constant feed of information regarding each individual. If this wasn't scary enough, the devices were then part of the system and could continue to be followed long past leaving the room. One particular piece that came up was something around a college student trying to seduce her professor. This is actually referencing a piece of intel we received previously, where the analyst alerted Cal about Gordon Amherst. This recording appears to be from before the last one, and shows us how we first came onto their radar, essentially by accident. Sir, we need to talk about Gordon Amherst. Did he finally sleep with his student, or did he build a biological weapon the world has never seen before? He did not sleep with his student, and I can't confirm whether or not he is working on a biological weapon. You can't confirm whether or not he is working on a biological weapon? That's correct, sir. Is he working on a biological weapon? I cannot confirm that, sir. So he's not working on a biological weapon, and is just a kook? I cannot confirm that, sir. Has anyone ever told you you can be really annoying and obtuse? Yes, sir. That's why I'm an analyst and not a field operative, sir. Okay, so... You're obsessed with Gordon Amherst and believe he may be a threat to national security, but can't prove that, and all you have to go on is some rants about climate change? And his association with Vitaly Chernenko. Vitaly... Uh, what now? Chernenko. Russian virologist who specializes in 3D printing. My nephew is into 3D printing. Why do we care about grown men who make plastic miniatures? We don't. But we should care about grown men who can manufacture viruses. This is now the third warning that Cal has been given by the analyst. We all know how this story goes. Amherst would go on to complete his super virus and release it into the world on Black Friday, putting us into the position we're now in, in present day. But it really does show how much warning Cal was given, and that he didn't just completely ignore the warnings, but he actively brushed them aside. He was even told about Vitaly Trenenko. The big question is, was Cal actually aware of what Amherst was doing, and was purposely instructing the analyst to ignore him? allowing him to continue with his work. I'm playing a little bit of catch up and will probably have another video out in the next few days, bringing me up to date on the descent comms that I've collected so far. I did miss a couple of weeks there, so there are certainly a few more available than what I've managed to get so far. 
I'm also going to post up non-commentary versions of the comms, so people can listen to them without me talking through them. I've said it before, but I'm really enjoying these comms, based on a time a while before the outbreak. They're definitely plugging a few of the questions we've had, while also adding a few more. There are some separate stories starting to come from these, so nearer to the end I hope to be able to organise these to play in order, highlighting each interaction. I think this has been Descent Comms 13 to 17, so in the next one I should be covering 18 to 22. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Extremis Malus, Extrema Remedia.